What is up, everybody? And welcome back to the famous Internet Famous Show. I'm your host, Devalor, and uh, man, we got a lot to talk about tonight. But first, it's the one, it's the only, it's Mike B, a.k.a. a.k.a. Mike B. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm glad I can see you. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, uh... that was scary, wasn't it? Yes, definitely. Yeah. There was, there yeah. was some... Bye. Behind the scenes stuff is always fun. Always the last <laughs> second things have to break, but it's okay. We're here. We're good. Everything looks great. Yeah, yeah. Pretend like it never happened. We, yes, <laughs> none of none of what we just talked about ever happened. <laughs> True. Uh, and our special guest for this week should be no stranger as well. Uh, you know him from Convert to Raid. It is master podcaster and asparagus enthusiast, Mr. Pat Crane. How's it going, man? Hello, fellas. So Thank great God. to be here. It's nice. Hey, uh, uh, just real quick. So I know that this is, we're still early in your shows, uh, you, in the beginning of your show, right? I, I, and I was an early adopter, and I've noticed some similarities with your guests. I'm not sure if you've <laughs> noticed it or not. But first we had... You know, Mike Schaffnett and and uh, the yellow dress, and he's very he's a very beautiful man. Yes. Number one. Uh, and then we had Olivia Grace, also very beautiful. And then How there's about the me. Yeah. I also was a co-host on Legendary. Look at that. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But we didn't. We never did a show together. No, though. we never did a show together, yeah. Mike. Yeah. Well, yeah. we did. We did. Uh, we did a uh, one show at BlizzCon. In a hotel room. Oh, my and, God. And I guess I had an awkward knee incident or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what was going on, but yeah. From, that, from was, like, that was the, that was the worst. Room. That was yeah, that was the worst thing that happened that night was the awkward knee. Right. We'll just leave it at that. Awkward, yeah. awkward knee incident. Do, yeah. we, do we already yeah. have a title for this episode? <laughs> 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 Maybe. Maybe. So, yeah. Keep your ears out, chat room, because we do... Uh, we do ask for your input on what we should name the episode at the end of the show. Maybe, maybe keep go. that one in your back pocket. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Pat, uh, good to have you on here. For the zero people that don't know who you are, could you give us a quick, uh, quick rundown? What, what sort of stuff you've been up to lately? Sure. So, uh, Convert to Raid is a podcast. Uh, it started off just a, just about World of Warcraft, um, and mainly about raiding. With that kind of name, you would think. <laughs> Maybe that it would sense. have something to do with that. Uh, and then uh, and then it's expanded since then. And now we do uh, uh, it's more of a convert to raid presents type of situation where we do uh, the battle net news. So we we cover w World of Warcraft first and then we cover any of the other games that are that are happening right right at that moment. Um, and then recently we, we actually started up a new podcast with a new feed and everything like that. And it's just called Battle Net Sports. Because if you're going to have Battle.net news, you should have Battle.net sports. And then next, Battle.net weather. <laughs> <laughs> Battle.net stocks. Happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The, <laughs> the Battle.net stock report. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so speaking of battles, yeah, I suppose, um, one of the biggest things that has been going on this particular week um, for all three of us for me a lot but also for you guys a lot but for me <laughs> a fucking lot <laughs> is, uh the battle for azeroth alpha is out there now i'm gonna i'm gonna preface this by saying i've, I've yeah, we're I've, giving away alpha keys bitches Woo! No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry josh sorry. all right i want i actually wonder if this okay the stream's over now i could just cut mike out of that you right need away. an ejection c button is what you need word. yeah <laughs> i wasn't expecting to need to eject the regular co-host from <laughs> But no, obviously, like I, I just, I just for like legal reasons, amongst my own, uh, as well as my own sanity, needed to throw out here. Obviously, yes, I work at Blizzard. I am not going to give out insider information on this show ever, let alone right now when oh, we're talking man. about this. Um, so I'm mostly going to let you guys sort of, um, sort of talk about it a little bit. Um, have you guys? Uh, I, I know Pat. I saw you streaming it. Uh, Mike, have you got a chance yep. to try it out yet? Just, I mean, like seriously, just a little bit. I just got on, checked out the hunter, check out the town, see where they moved, and then uh, was intrigued by the UI, the, mm. the the wee the wee little little skill bar. 
What? <laughs> What's that all about? I didn't. I didn't dig in the settings to see like what the. What, this is this. This is your screen cap right there. Um, uh, I, I didn't. I didn't dig in the settings to see if it's possible to actually extend that out at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there are some uh, some UI changes. I think a lot of people notice them in the videos that we put out um, uh, around BlizzCon. Uh, because one, one of the things that I got to do this year that I was super hype about for BlizzCon was I got to uh, make these sort of like walkthrough videos, just going through and uh, going through some of the dungeons, going through some of the... I didn't, I didn't make the videos. I just sort of hosted them and, and helped put them together. But um, yeah, like uh, there, there was a lot going on, uh, a lot going on there, a lot going on in the UI. A lot of people noticed it there. It was super cool. Um, Pat, what are your initial thoughts? Like, I, I know obviously you've, you've probably been talking about this a lot over the last couple of days, but how are you, how are you feeling going into this alpha, particularly, I guess, uh, compared to previous alphas? Uh, well, first of all, I'll just, I'll just let everybody know that, um, you know, Josh, I was a little concerned cause I went in there and it's not done. What? Number one. Whoa. It's, it what? seems like a, it what? seems like a what? work in progress. I don't know. Uh, no, it's early it's actually access, really good. Can early access. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, it's actually really good. And and I, Mike, you went in uh, to see what the hunter was all about. Yeah, I just went through and just looked at my basically my own stuff. Yeah, was yeah. greedy. Just went. I was the same way. So I actually started up two hunters because I'm like one one on each side. I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna figure out what's going on on the alliance side and and on the horde side and and maybe try out the different specs because I knew that they were um, switching some stuff around. Yeah. Uh, and like marksman feels very different. Yeah. I haven't had to actually try it, but I mean, like when you see like murder crows on like tier one, it's kind of like, oh, oh, OK, this is which is, well, I mean, kind of makes sense. I feel like like when you're leveling up to have something, you could just kind of spam like a finisher, like kind of set right. and forget. And, and there are actually a couple of different uh, shots that you can do on the move now. So you can do steady shot and um, rapid fire. Right. You can do mm -hmm. both of those on the move, which is actually kind of cool. Um, and I'm still not sure what I think about aim aim shot where that is because it has like a like the base is a 12 second CD, 12 seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's writing notes. Good. Day, Good. day and a half. Uh, but it seems like <laughs> there's ways to get around that. So I, I I just need to figure it out a little bit. I I've only had a couple of hours working with it. So yeah. I don't know. I'll let uh, I'll let some theory crafters just do some work too. Well, and um, and obviously, like like you you were sort of alluding to a second ago. I will say this is very very early in the alpha like class yeah. development. This is the, this is the point where this is the point of class development over the course of or the, the the development of the expansion where they've gone. Yeah, maybe we'll change some stuff. <laughs> and that's yeah. <laughs> so uh, I yeah. I like that there are a couple of talents uh, in the marksman tree that were just uh, to be named later. You know, it's like, we don't know what it is. it's just, yeah. do you have an idea? Here. Do you, do you want to like suggest your own talent? Yeah. Yeah. Make me awesome. How's that? Make me awesome yeah. twice. It's actually, it's, it's been really interesting for me. Um, Particularly with this expansion, because um, I've gotten senior enough at Blizzard that now I I know a lot of what's going on a long time before it actually happens. So like I loaded up the alpha, <laughs> I loaded up the alpha early today. I was like, yeah, I should um, I should make sure to get some play time in on the alpha before I uh, before we go on the show later, so I can kind of talk about it. And I got in there, I was like, I've done all of this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, well, and, 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 and you, this is this is old. <laughs> well, do you have so working there and then being able to play what is available? Are you kind of like in a time warp type of thing where yes, you know so much ahead of time that you're like, oh, yeah, I can't wait for this to come in or or whatever. Legitimately, so, the reason the reason that I tend to not talk about WoW like while I'm streaming or on shows like this that much anymore is because mm -hmm. I can't remember what people know. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. I, I lose track. I, I call it right. time copping because I'm like, wait, hang on. So oh, right. do you, well, and there's like, there's so many different things that, you, that I end up like juggling around inside my head because it's like, okay, what's, what's currently live? What's currently being talked about being hot fixed on live? What's currently on PTR? What's coming to PTR very soon? What's not coming to PTR, but will be in a future patch? What's in beta? What's in alpha? What's in friends and family? Like, what's all of this difference of? And I just can't 
it's it's really difficult to actually keep track of all that anymore. So, mm-hmm. so I just gave up. Gray Gray's <laughs> sports almanac, basically. Like yeah, exactly. you just Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, uh, here's, a, here's my other impression with uh, Battle for Azeroth right now as it stands in the alpha. Just real, real quick. Uh, looking for a healer for a dungeon. Anybody? <laughs> healer? Anybody? <laughs> All right, that's my impression. That's it. <laughs> So what you're saying oh, is I should, I should, I should, I should, I mean, granted a sh- shitty healer, I should just roll resto, just, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm down here. I'm down here. But when there's nothing up here, that's up here now. Right. You are way, <laughs> you you are way it's a better than scale, really. yeah. yeah, exactly. I think I, yeah. I, I think I need to start a druid on, uh, on there too. So, yeah, yeah. I figure it all out. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's no allied races either. And, and so mm. for me, it's kind of like. It seems, and I know that it'll be coming, and it, you know, I'm totally cool with it. I'm down with it. Uh, but there's, there's the new hotness over on the live server, but it's not on the new hotness, which is the alpha. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, I, I, but I want to play the new thing over here. I want to play the Allied Races. I want to level one up. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Blizzard, stop uh, releasing gonna- content so regularly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> Hey Josh, I'll let you know when that's a real problem. When when Blizzard releases too much new content, especially World of Warcraft, when they le- release way too much uh, content, I'll let you know. Yeah, I'm never going to talk to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not going to happen. That's just not going to happen. No, exactly. Yeah, I should also mention, um, just because it's been coming up a bunch for just general awareness, um, we tweeted about it from Warcraft devs earlier. Uh, there are no alpha keys. If someone tries to give you an alpha key or says that they can give you an alpha key, they are full of shit. Do not listen to that person. Lies. Yeah. I do not have alpha, alpha keys either. And I cannot get you alpha, so please stop asking. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, ask Olivia. Yeah, Olivia. Right. She's got all right. the keys. Yep. <laughs> um, so actually, speaking of Olivia, that's a, that's a good little segue there. Oh, nice. Um, nice. Twitch announced today uh, their new community guidelines. Um, and I'm not going to go through all of it here because it's a lot of like legal text and everything. But there were a lot of things that were really, really interesting, I thought, um, about uh, what their new community guidelines were. Um, if you uh, if you are unfamiliar with them, I definitely recommend checking them out. In fact, if you're watching the VOD, I recommend that you pause this, go check them out and then come back. Um, or, you know, just continue watching Internet Famous all the time, every time. Watch the rest of it while you're reading it, then go back and watch it again. It's fine, too. Yes. <laughs> um, but there were a few things that I thought was super interesting about it. Um, is there anything that you guys, before I, before I get into my list here, is there anything that you guys want to uh, call out as particularly interesting from, uh, from, from what they were talking about in the, uh, in the new guidelines? Because I, I have a bunch, so I just want to give you guys the chance to get in here before I rant for the next five minutes. <laughs> the only thing you don't have in here, um, which is still, I think, still kind of like a gray area right now, hmm. uh, despite the fact that they have the rules out, uh, is uh, a copyrighted music. Um, uh, so we, we talked about the way we, we uh, Shizzle and I actually had a, a little mini uh, in, Internet Famous, right? Because he sleeps through the show all the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we we had our own little thing where we kind of went over all, everything and like, the copyrighted music thing seemed really odd because you know it's not odd like it seemed correct which when when it comes to like music copyright and being like correct and in terms of like abiding by you know uh, uh, copyright limitations and all that um, there it hurts because you think about like for me it's like all the internet DJs that uh, that I'm that I'm a fan of uh, one in particular Jovian like he streams like every other night every night um, and he's an excellent DJ and everything uh, and I just feel like if that if if those rules are like enforced to a T where you can't even like DJ music like I understand like playing music like in the background or something that makes sense right um, but when you're at, when you can't DJ that's where it starts to hurt a little bit. So I'm waiting to see what his take on it before we kind of go down that route uh, and see if there's any other follow up to that. But your other the list of other stuff that you have here to talk about is actually pretty all encompassing, I feel. Hmm. Yeah. OK, so I, I guess we'll like uh, that's actually really interesting thinking about uh, the uh, the whole music side, because everyone knows that streaming copyrighted music on Twitch is at the very least frowned upon. Um, right. Uh, right. At, at, at worst, it's like um, 
uh, the RIAA or somebody will come after you or the FCC will be mad at you or something like that. That's why they mute copyrighted music in VODs whenever mm. they can. Um, but everybody does it like literally every I don't know of a Twitch streamer that has not at some point used copyrighted music in their stream. It just happens. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's in a lot of ways. It's difficult not to have it happen because half the time the songs are in. Like if you play GTA and you have the radio on when you get in the car. Right. All of a sudden yeah. there's some there, there's some uh, copyrighted music being played right there. So it's actually really difficult. And I think that's part of why they just mute VODs when it's a thing. They don't actually really go after anybody. Because trying yeah. to police that with all the copyrighted music that's just in games would be super difficult. But making that point of, okay, well, what if I'm what if I'm DJing? What if I'm working on a remix of a song? What if I'm working on a cover of a song? Like that's They did actually they did actually address uh covers of songs. Oh, did they? I think. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. the in the guidelines. They address covers of songs saying that, you know, hey, if you're doing a new performance of of an already existing song that's okay or a parody or so, you know something like that but just playing the the music straight through that is still a no no yeah right but, I but guess, they don't really deal with it very effectively i don't think yeah and i guess like part like if you're a if you're a, a musician who likes to stream yourself playing music it's going to be really difficult to cover the song without like unless it's one that you've already like learned off stream or something if you're like hey yeah i'll take requests for covers um, and I'll, I'll, I'll play oh, like eight bit drummer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, or the, uh, piano improv guy. Um, right. Like half the time people be like, Hey, here's a song I want you to play. And he'd be like, all right, sure. I'll play Drake, whatever. I have to know what the song is first. So then he plays like the first couple minutes of the song or something You're like, okay, yeah, and I'll cover that. Um, or if you're, so, if you're working on a, a cover where you need to listen to it over and over again to get it right. I don't know. It seems, seems difficult. Yeah, so uh, here's what it says regarding so performance arts. Perform performances of pre-existing works require that you have all appropriate rights to share the content. That makes sense. Uh, live performance uh, and creation. Uh, music content should focus on live creation and performance of original music. It may also stream a live performance of a cover song, uh, as so long as it does not incorporate recorded musical or other audio elements created or owned by someone else. So that's, if, if, we, follow, if we follow this to a T, that's rip 8-bit drummer right there. Like just just right off the top, because, you know, he just basically takes, you know, just like you said, like he gets he gets a request and he plays a YouTube video and he basically just drums over it. And that's pretty much it. And so that's that is because he's using a uh, uh, recorded musical or audio elements from somebody else uh, that technically breaks this rule. Now, this rule exists everywhere like this, the, anywhere there's some kind of like streaming platform or whatever, like these types of uh, uh, of rules, guidelines, laws, et cetera, like they 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 apply everywhere it's just never enforced but it's just scary to see it come up again yeah when people have their entire streams based on it yeah um it's like i'm thinking about people like um le french stallion as well who most of his stream is playing um uh it's not guitar hero what's the name of it? rocksmith mm -hmm. um and that like he obviously he adds quite a bit of extra value to it by virtue of just being a ridiculous person but he does mostly just play rocksmith um, and it's actually gonna be really difficult for him to stay a hundred percent in line with these, um, with these, uh, 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 new guidelines just because of the fact that what he does is, I don't know, it's interesting stuff. It's interesting to think about. And that's kind of, kind of the tone, I guess, that we're going to get going through this whole thing here is, Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder how that will work out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cause actually the, the, the next point that I wanted to talk about is they're basically starting to hold broadcasters responsible for their chat. So if you are. Somebody who and you, you see this a lot with a lot of really, really, um, uh, really popular, really big broadcasters um, where they'll have a chat that is just cancer. Like it is bad in there. It is really bad in that chat and just terrible people spamming terrible things all the time. And they'll they'll generally just ignore it or they'll just be like, eh, it's just chat, whatever. That chat's just like that. I can't, I can't what be responsible for that. Yeah, what, what do you, do you want me to do? do? Yeah. yeah. And it seems like, <laughs> it seems like what Twitch is saying in response to what do you want me to do is something. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, and now you can do the, at least you can do your uh, general guidelines, you know, pop up thing on Twitch where it just says, Hey, you know, like yours says, number one, don't be a dick, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, and so you can just say, say whatever. So that's doing at least something. Right. It's it's saying something to your community. And, and I think that's really what Twitch wants. 
you know, they, they want people to, to at least address their audience and say, listen, we're here to have fun. Let's have fun. Yeah. And like, um, uh, something that we've seen a lot just by analyzing data, looking at how people use the internet, using, looking at how people use, uh, platforms like Twitch is you can, you can really tell the impact of a broadcaster going, Hey, yo, that's not cool. And banning somebody or something Mm -hmm. like three people that they do that to over the course of an entire stream. And that can be the extent of it too. Like, Hey, yeah, that's not cool. That changes the tone of everything. It's not going to be instant, right? Like people like, like, um, like soda poppins chat is still going to be bad for quite some time, I would imagine. But if he starts to go, yo, you know what? That's not really cool. Or that's not really what we're trying to do here or anything along those lines. It gets moderators that are actually moderating. That would be a step as well. And just take some sort of action against it, even though it feels incredibly futile in those situations. It does actually have a long term, a long term effect, I think. Well, and, and didn't I see you actually on Twitter kind of addressing this type of thing, mm. just kind of harassment or, or bad behavior in a community, in an online community, especially uh, where you you almost have to say something, because if you don't say something, then you're complicit in it. So then you're then you're like almost saying, oh, it's OK to say that stuff, whatever it is, you know, and if it's and if it's kind of like this cancerous uh, vocabulary or or just the, the just these different um, like like abuse phraseology or whatever, you know, I mean, like putting people down and stuff like that. It's yeah. like you have to say something if especially if it's your community, you have to say something. Otherwise, it's just going to continue. So. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And a lot of people, uh, it's, it's sort of uh, something that's become endemic in the internet. I think this is kind of what I was talking about on Twitter the other day is people just sort of like, we've always said there's nothing you can do about it. Or we've always said, just ignore the trolls or something like that. And that's how it's always right. been. So that's how it is. Um, and it's, uh, people really underestimate the impact of someone that someone else was, res- uh, when someone's being a, a horrible troll, Someone that they respect telling them that that's not cool. Um, half the time, sure, it's going to just they're, they're going to turn against that person and be like, no, I, you're such an SJW now or whatever. But uh, the other half of the time it works. And if they do that and then go to someone else and get the same response, then go to someone else and get the same response. Eventually, it does actually get through to them. Um, for the most part, there are obviously insufferable assholes on the Internet. Um, what? <laughs> wait, wait. We Hold should, on a we second. We give people the what? opportunity to be an insufferable what? asshole first. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Mike, you're awful quiet over there. How do you feel about broadcasters having to take ownership of their... I know you were talking about this a little bit on your um, your stream with Shizzle earlier. Yeah. Uh, so, it, I mean, it makes perfect sense, you know? Uh, it's, it, you, can't, you can't use the defense of... Oh well, it's chat. It's just gonna do, it's gonna be what do a chat does, you know, because that's what got us to this point to begin with. That's that's why we're here addressing it is because chat did did that, you know, like they they do those things. Like watch uh watch any any esports event, right? It, heaven forbid there's there's a black guy somewhere in that mix, right? Yeah. Like the second is one on the screen, just just come on, but all the way down. Like that's it's just it's just and, and 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 like I don't know if the defense is oh it's a joke. It's like well then it's a really fucking old joke <laughs> <laughs> right. that's been done to death. You know it's like it's this there's the uh, the emoticon abuse is kind of like, I think the emo the emote uh, abuse is kind of the biggest thing. Uh, that I think has kind of brought this down because it's the most it's the most passive way that somebody or, or low key way that somebody can like kind of slide in and, and, and say something a little, you know, it's like, oh, it's, this is a little there's a little bit of an asshole thing to say. I'm just going to use an I use an emote. So it's fine. It's just an emote. It's fine. You know, yeah. uh, I think that's probably the uh, one of the biggest reasons why this is happening, because that could be like, almost anybody can can kind of fall into that trap of thinking, oh, this is funny. I would never say, hey, is that a black guy? Ha, 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 right. I would yeah. put out, put this emote down. And I think that's the problem is that that kind of behavior has been just kind of like, oh, well, it's, it's, it's an emote. It's OK. You know, they're not calling him names or saying anything. Um, and so that's that's where I think the gray area is. And so, yeah, it's up to the streamer now to 
to police that and to basically tell us like, Hey, you know, don't, don't be dicks. <laughs> like that's it really right. kind of boils back down to the whole don't be dicks thing. Yeah. And the emo thing actually brings up a, a really interesting sort of angle to this. They were talking a little bit about it on the stream. Um, uh, the guy, I think it was citizen, uh, is the name that he goes by, um, use the term dog whistle. And when I heard right. that, I was like, no, one's going to know what he means by that. It's one of those Social yeah, I media. totally did. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those terms that someone who spends a lot of time paying attention to social media is like, yeah, dog whistle. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Dog whistles. They're terrible. And then everyone else is like, why do you hate dogs? What, <laughs> right. what, what are you talking about? It's a, it's a term that basically means. Um, so similar to how you can blow into a dog whistle and humans will, generally speaking, not hear the sound that it makes, but dogs generally will. Um, it's the idea of I'm going to say this thing. And average people are just going to be like, OK, whatever. Um, but <laughs> but my homies are going to know I'm being a racist asshole right now. And that's that's kind right. of where they they come from. And so the things like the like the try hard spam or the uh, come on bruh spam or the um, mm. I don't actually know how to pronounce it. And NL, NLA and L. I don't know what how to actually oh, pronounce yeah. that emote. Um, the little uh, uh, face with a turban emote that you see spammed a whole bunch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, hmm. Yeah, everyone knows that you're being racist. Everyone on Twitch knows that you're being racist. And then people will be like, oh, but it's just an emo, bro. I was like, well, yeah, but you were using it in a clearly offensive it, manner. It's a racist emote. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, that's the uh, thing. It's like, so try hard is an emote based on, I always forget his actual name because I always just call him try hard. Um, try caster. No, that's a different thing. That's, a, that's, that's, a, a, that's yeah. a podcast thing. Try it's like try it was a podcast. <laughs> anyway, yeah. he's a he's a speedrunner, um, and right. he, he used to be really involved in the uh, the FGC as well. I think he might still be. Uh, try hex, yeah, there we go. That was it. A triflex, I think, is where I was going. Triflex, with. triflex. It's like a bowflex, but <laughs> much <laughs> better. <laughs> but yeah, he's uh, it's just it's just his face, and so it's like okay, do we right. d does Twitch ban try hex because people use his face in racist ways that's fucking weird like i don't know there's there's a lot going on there that uh what happened? oh good well you, you, you can't control the meme i mean so if you're if you're a content creator and and somebody creates a meme about you or because of you or whatever you can't control the meme but if you are a content creator in the twitch space and you know that that me that meme is out there and being used to be a dick, then I think you kind of have to say something. I mean, especially now, now with the new community rules, you, sh you should say something at least. Mm. But yeah, um, I don't know. I, I think the, the thing that Twitch is sort of coming up with here, which is actually, I, I think, kind of refreshing to see in 2018, is they're now looking at intent rather than content. In a way, they're sort of looking at it and saying, all right, what were you trying to do in this situation? What was your goal in this situation? And this applies to a lot of the different rules here. This is just a great example of it. If someone is spamming the tryhard emote in chat because Trihex is doing something and they're excited about what Trihex is doing, that's perfectly fine. That's awesome. Like, yeah, that's great. Show support to awesome streamers. Go for it. If someone is spamming the tryhard emote because there may have been a black person somewhere in the vicinity then that's just someone being racist and they should be removed. Um, and they, they sort of extended that a lot to their, um, their sort of their, their new policies on things like um, clothing, uh, camera angles, uh, sending things to, to social media and so on, where it's like, okay, I have come to your stream and you are, you are, you, you're using the camera angle in a certain way. You are dressing in a certain way and all of that you're making sexual innuendos constantly you are encouraging people to donate so that you will do sexy things on stream. This is clearly a situation in which you are attempting to use sex to sell things or to, to uh, get donations, basically. That is a, a pretty clear situation of this is against the terms of service. However, if it's just hot and so you're wearing light clothing, okay, that's fine. It's not, it's not the clothes fault or the person's fault in this case. It's just hot and they would like to wear something light. I don't know. It's, I think it's a good approach to look at what, what is their, what is their purpose here? Not rather than looking at the letter of exactly what's being done, look at what's the purpose of what they're trying to do. Right. I and, I th and I think it also has to be a little bit, you have to kind of play it a little loose here because you're dealing with a very large community. 
So I think that, especially when you're dealing with community standards, you have to be really careful. Um, and the FCC kind of goes through this stuff too, um, on a, on, you know, for all the broadcast area, you know, uh, but you have to let the community kind of decide what's going on, but you also have to kind of manage it and say, all right, how are we going to enforce this? And the only way you can enforce it is by saying, listen, you know that you intended for this to be kind of a weird situation. So uh, you, you know, this is a strike against you anyway. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's it's really tough. And I and I kind of go through this, too, because uh, Convert to Rate has kind of a large guild and where we have, you know, it's like I think it's 7000 plus tunes, whatever. And Damn. so we have to so we have to manage all of that stuff and we have to say, OK, listen, we're supposed to be an inclusive guild. We want everybody to play together. We want to have fun. We want to we want to make sure that we're not freaking out people because of language use or because we're, you know whatever who knows um and so when we deal with problems we have to we have to look at it intent it it can't be just yes i mean there there's you said this at this time and that's wrong okay that's fine but your intent what what was it was it to be jokey if so you know that's kind of a, a slap on the wrist if it was to be insightful if it was to, it was to try to incite something then Oh, all right. You're, <laughs> you're just, you're just gone. Yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't have that. <clears throat> yeah. Probably a good example would be, uh, PewDiePie actually. Yeah. Uh, so PewDiePie, uh, two months ago or so, uh, he, he dropped the N bomb while playing PUBG or something. Uh, it was, it was very much like a reaction. Like he just, something happened and that was just the first thing that fell out of his mouth for some reason. Uh, and so in that case, it's like, when you look at intent, it's like, okay, He's not inciting anything. He's not trying to rally the clan, but he definitely said something fucked up. So in that case, they would have to address it like that. Like they would have, they would by their own standards, they would have to treat that uh, differently than somebody who is, you know, using, uh, you know, if, if, if the context was, you know, let's get, let's get the boys together or whatever, and <laughs> throw on the, the hoods, you know, like it's, it, what it's not that. And so that's, that's just that's just with you know uh, uh with with profanity or with slurs or whatever uh and then of course there's you know uh um uh, booby streamers uh or or whatever where they're you know like there was like there was there was a video a clip somewhere i wish i remember who who did it cuz it was it was hilarious where the guy was he had a whiteboard or something like that and he was like oh thank you for subbing and he's like i'm going to go write your name on this board and he was sticking his ass out like in the camera and everything and then he starts like humping the whiteboard while he's writing the name or something I didn't you know, know like, you were like, watching my stream dude <laughs> i didn't know <laughs> I, I clipped it man i was the one guy there and i clipped it yeah. nice uh, it was but, how did you not know he was there it was thank, his name that you were writing on the board <laughs> yeah exactly it was my name thank you for your uh, donation <laughs> yeah it's, it's just you know it's 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 just something that they need to now they can look at now because it's in the rules uh instead of writing more rules trying to fit every single nook and cranny thing that somebody could potentially come up with some kind of workaround or loophole with they just said let's look at intent let's look at the context and then we'll decide what to do with it which and that that is the best way i think to handle this yeah no i i completely agree um something that um i've had to deal with a lot at at work in terms of like trying to figure out like how do we set guidelines for like this influencer event or something like that is okay how do we enforce it and once we've figured out how we enforce it how do we keep people from abusing how we enforce it right because like as soon as you so if if twitch had just come out and said something like all right um we don't want people wearing bikinis on Twitch. Then, all right, well, but now if you're IRL streaming at a beach, you can't wear, a, you have to wear like a full body suit. You, have to, yeah. you need a wetsuit to go to or, the beach now. Or you can wear just a one piece swimsuit while you're in the house on stream. So, yeah, exactly. Like it's, <laughs> it gets into this whole like, uh, this is, it's a, and then you have to go down that rabbit hole so far in terms of like, well, okay, well, it's all right to wear a bikini as long as you're near a beach or if it's really hot. And by really hot, we mean above this temperature, but below yeah. this temperature, because at that point you are dead. I don't know. Uh, and like you, you just have to get into all these like ridiculous little like uh, uh, nitpicky sort of nooks and crannies of how the actual rule works, where it's better to just be like, OK, 
these are our guidelines. This is what our intent is. We're going to look at what your intent is. And if we don't like it, we'll just get rid of you. <laughs> That's right. That's basically what it boils down. It also helps prevent situations where like, um, like I, I guess using the bikini example again, like if someone is wearing a, uh, a tube top or something and people go to their channel, they're like, oh, that's that's the same size as a bikini. That's uh, that's not OK. <laughs> or like um, um, I, I saw someone somewhere talking about like, well, they should they should require you to wear underwear or something like that. It's like, OK, so now now what you're going to end up with is a whole bunch of like basically basement nerds going around to different twitch channels going hmm is she wearing underwear oh yeah. you can tell you can tell from the folds that she's not yeah. wearing underwear the thwarted band the th thought the thought police t-h-o-t-t -T police <laughs> ah, <okay>. yeah <laughs> that was good i just made that up that was good yeah well you know josh, josh you are giving me ideas for my stream now like wear, wear, wear just don't promote this like the first one yeah. <laughs> that's that's also going to be awesome for my stream i'm sure <laughs> that crane in a tube top <laughs> um the other interesting thing about these new guidelines is that they're actually applying them retroactively so they're actually going to go back through your like vods and stuff and be like all right yeah you have been okay with people donating to your stream and spamming the n-word 500 times in your donation message which then goes up on the screen and gets read out through text to speech it happened 50 times in one broadcast and you never said a thing banned. That seems, um, a, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it's a little weird. Like it's hmm. tough to throw on rules retroactively. And, and I'm not saying that for that particular example, that, no, sure. Yeah. You know, whatever, but like that, um, that's everyone knows that's not okay. But, and, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anytime, you do, anytime, you, anytime you throw on a rule and say it's going <laughs> to no, be enforced, that. <laughs> if you say it's going to be enforced retroactively, then it's like, oh crap. Well, what did I do? Well, yeah, I, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. I, I think as long as it's, as long as it's used as a, as a guiding hand instead of a, instead of a, you know, a fist to your face, then it'll be okay. But, you know, if it, it if it's a fist to your face and like, nope, you're insta banned because of what you did two years ago. I mean, that seems a little weird to me. Yeah. You know what? God, now I think about it. I think they said six months retroactively or something like that. So it's not. Oh, is it? Okay. It's not like, because I have highlights from like the, when I, before I started streaming full time, I was like, what, 2012, just streaming like BGs, but I was streaming BGs with my, you know, RBGs with like, with my guild and yeah. some of those guys have negative filter right. <laughs> so it's so like there yeah you're, there's probably content on my channel right now where there's somebody in the background who's blurting out the n-word or or some, making up some saying up some other shit that especially especially considering that five years ago tip or six years ago you know general banter between guilds uh it's like it's you know it's like it's like blazing saddles <laughs> versus like current comedies right it's like there's a different standard of what we thought was funny right I, and compared sure. to today you know and so it's like there's probably a ton of other shit there that uh exists but if it's only six months then i feel i feel like okay i'm probably i'm yeah. probably pretty good here i, I could um, be that up entirely i don't remember where i saw that it's closer oh. to what you're doing now though that's that's the yeah. important part yeah, 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 totally. and i see a couple of people in chat who are i, I guess confused about what's going on the issue isn't like with if I, for example, had donation alerts on right now um, and had something that popped up and someone decided that they were going to spam the N word in it and it's going to come up all over the screen on all over Pat's face and wow. uh, text to speech would go go across. <laughs> and I just sat here and went, yo, thanks for the 10 bucks and moved on. That's the problem. The issue is that I have reacted to this in a way that encourages it. Or even if I just continued on without saying anything about it, that's also the problem. If, yeah. however, I went, whoa, shit, that's awful. Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ban that guy right now, uh, and I'm gonna turn off text to speech on my uh, donations for a little bit until that person's gone or something like that, just to make sure. Um, having some sort of reaction to it is what Twitch is looking for. They're not expecting you to be beholden to what your community is doing. They are expecting you to respond to what your community is doing. Yeah, yeah, and, and maybe lead them a little bit, and maybe yeah. say, hey. We uh, in this room we don't do that. Yeah, use your adult voice. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also worth mentioning um, there there were lots of um, uh, secondary questions that came up. Like I know um, a lot of people when these guidelines first were posted before they had their live stream thing, people were worried about like, well, what does this mean for like body painting and so on? Then they had the live stream and they were like, okay, yeah, in this situation, the intent is that you are doing something artistic. So the body painting is fine. If you're body painting dicks all over yourself, that's not fine. Like consider consider exactly what the uh, what the intent is for this thing. Yeah. Uh, and I don't I don't know. Technically, maybe even body painting dicks all over yourself would be OK. I don't actually know exactly how that turns out. But it's like if the por- if the purpose of your bo- of your body painting, if it's a body painting stream, which is in reality a I wore a nipple cover stream, then that's that's one thing. But if it's someone like K Pike or Jari or whoever, they're all going to be fine because they're legitimately just there doing awesome art and uh, and Twitch is okay with that. So again, it comes back to what is your intent, not what is the actual thing being created quite so yeah. much. Um so speaking of oh did you have something you want to say? No, I'm just saying, I would just just to kind of wrap that up. All of this is 100% depending on how they enforce it. And they've oh, even yeah. done some of themselves. And they want to, because I know there's probably some people that are just kind of like, oh, well, if it's, if it's just, you know, whatever the people at Twitch think, then it's going to be whatever, you know, that hive mind of people think is wrong. And that may not apply to what I like or something. Uh, yeah, you may have a point. That's the kind of stuff that we need to hold them accountable for. And that is and that is their own words. Uh, so it's it's something that we just have to basically watch and just see, you know, how it rolls out. So how they enforce this, all these things uh, is is 100 percent like going to make or break this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's it, it's a good thing that they were relatively um, we were talking earlier. It's a, it's a good thing that they were relatively uh loose in how exactly they defined what sort of actions they want and sort of leaving it up to don't be a dick basically is what it comes mm-hmm. down to right um but that does mean it's going to be very difficult for them to be uh to be consistent with how they're actually enforcing these rules because a lot of the pressure that they've come under recently has been things like uh like okay well this this streamer uh, did this thing, this other streamer did this much worse thing. However, streamer two only got a suspension where streamer one got a ban. Yeah. And I know I happen to know that a lot of those cases it's been because, okay, well, yeah, that was the 12th time that the first streamer did that less bad thing. And the first time that this other streamer did this worse thing. Yep. And that's, that's what I was going to say is like over time, I think it'll all even out. It's just, how are they going to enforce it right now? Like immediately, how are they going to, uh, roll that out and it will seem it will probably seem a lot more unfair uh, for some. But that's kind of why they threw the retroactively in there, I think, because yeah. they already know that they have some streamers that are problems. Right. So they already know that they have some problems. They just don't know how to enforce it. Now they have a way to enforce it. Mm-hmm. So um, I think I think that as we go through the process, it'll be fine. It'll, everybody will kind of figure it out. Um, but right now it's going to be, uh, some tough love for, for certain streamers. We'll see. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so anyway, moving on a little bit, speaking of content getting out of hand, uh, so this whole <laughs> machine learning thing with replacing faces is actually terrifying. Like this actually scares me quite dramatically so basically what's boiled down to is um there was a subreddit which has now been banned um but there was a subreddit which was basically some guy was using a a machine learning ai to basically take a whole bunch of pictures of a celebrity and uh take their face and put it on the body of porn actresses so that they could basically make porn of whatever girl they felt like Um, And obviously that's terrifying because now it's like, okay, just from the immediate perspective, it's like, well, this is highly abusive to uh, the women that are involved in this thing because now it's like, Hey, I'm, uh, I don't know, just as a, a, a random example, I'm Lucy Lawless. And now there's all sorts of porn of me on the internet that looks, I mean, it, it, you, if you, if you really analyze the pixels, you can kind of tell it's fake, but you have to really analyze those pixels. And if you're the person who's really analyzing those pixels, then I mean, job's already done at that point, basically. So, um, that was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, yeah. uh, so the app 
it showed up that so somebody put it together and then like the the problem and the reason why it just kind of like blew up was because anybody could download it and do it themselves they basically have to teach this thing what somebody looks like and it takes uh apparently hours like or even days in some cases uh and so once they once they get that information then they're able to map it to other you know to another face on another body um you know it started off as there is like it was like nicholas cage and like every movie or something and uh like there's a skit where uh, there's an snl skit where like nicholas cage was on uh, like the actual nicholas cage and there was like uh one of the guys somebody there was doing a nicholas cage impression right next to him and they basically put his face on that one and it was kind of like whoa like some of them looked pretty good. Uh, and, and so then, of course, because Rule 34, right? Like, then, of course, it blows up into, you know, the, uh, 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 into porn. And the thing is, so it's, it's, it's been snuffed out now, right? Just, just, just for now, it's, poof, it's gone. Everybody's already talked about it. Everybody knows what it is. Everybody knows how to Google and find it. Uh, so they could do it themselves or find another place that uh, where they could go and discuss this and learn more and do all this. Um, it's, I think the biggest thing is not that it happened, but just like the future implications of yeah. where this is going. It looks like, yeah, in some cases, in most cases, it looks like shit now. In some cases, it looks pretty good. But in most cases, it looks pretty shitty. But in five years? It's gonna. It's probably gonna look real. Yeah, and they've, like, been, they've been doing this with audio for a while now, where mm-hmm. where you can actually sub in, where you can actually uh, have you know machine the machine learn the voice, and then you just type in whatever you want, and it'll say it, and it sounds mostly like them, like ninety five percent like them, yeah. and. You know, other than phraseology and stuff like that, I mean, you pretty much have it. So now you can just replace people <laughs> very easily. Yeah. Just put yeah. them into wherever, wherever you want. So I'm actually a, I'm a paid actor. Josh has been dead for months. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's an AI. I'm an AI. Yeah. yeah. And like, I think part of it too is. Video evidence has always been like, uh, okay, yeah, we've got video evidence of this actually occurring. Pfft, full hard stop. Yes, that person did that thing. Look, there they are on video doing this thing. And now it's like, okay, but you could, if you can use this to put someone's face on someone else in some security footage or something, now all of a sudden, like, video evidence of a crime committed is as inadmissible as a Photoshop of a crime being committed. Because, yeah. like, all right, well, now, now the technology exists to where anybody with random stock uh, security footage of a crime, anybody with an episode of cops somewhere on their hard drive <laughs> can now insert anyone who that they can get a substantial number of pictures for. So everyone with an Instagram account, basically, uh, and just put their face on top of the thing and be like, look, yeah, here it is. We've got hard evidence right here that Pat Crane uh, punched a puppy. For like 10 minutes. I only did it. Well, yeah, it was for 10 minutes. It was fine. <laughs> you caught me. <laughs> yeah. No, I would never do that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, with, look, look at like games. Games, you know, the graphics get better. But look at VR now. Now we're experiencing games, uh, the quality of a game five years ago, right? In, in VR, you know, in fluid VR. Uh, we're, you know. It, it, right now, some some of you might be thinking like it's like, oh, well, it looks like shit. It's not going to happen. But I mean, just look how far we've gone in the past, like 10 years, just in in everything, in everything. Uh, the cameras that we have are better than they were, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago. So the quality of your picture of your face is that's going to be up is going to be is going to be a higher quality. So therefore, as the machine goes and learns it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a better quality mask. Um and all they need, all they need is to just, just find the right, just the right amount of, I don't know, like just degradation and quality or something. And, 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 and they could scan, they could basically blackmail somebody uh, on social media by posting some kind of clip, like you said, like Pat Crane kicking a puppy or something. Uh, and all it takes, what man, the all hell, it takes. guys? I, I know, just want to say. No, he, doesn't, he doesn't puppy. kick puppies. All right, all he doesn't right. kick puppies. He doesn't kick puppies. <laughs> he doesn't kick puppies. No. Uh, so it could be a video of Pat Crane listening to Nickelback, and oh, it's something that's, that's even worse. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the video but, of Pat Green uh, listening to Nickelback made me go punch a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's all it takes, especially with with today. We have we we live in a bit of an outrage culture right now, and all it takes for somebody to get to to pick it up, and all of a sudden, if it, once it makes a headline, people don't read the fucking article, even if it's been a, you know added on. Oh, never mind, this is all fake. You know, it doesn't matter. The headline's out there; it's being retweeted. People are responding. People are talking about it, and that's it. And then once the fix comes out, nobody ever wants to admit that they're fucking wrong, yeah. right? Or that they retweeted something that ended up being fake. Nobody ever wants to talk about that. So they're never going to acknowledge it. And so the people who are completely out of the loop are always going to believe that that Pat Crane list is a nickelback. And that's a terrible thing. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. I've, I've, I've done it. I've done, He's been I trying it. to quit for years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been clean, man. I've been clean. That's right. Been trying yeah. to. Ugh, you're giving me the jitters just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, I don't know. I think it's something that we have to. What you were just talking about, Mike. It's something we have to deal with a lot in the sort of like brand management, social media marketing side of things. Is if hypothetically speaking, and fortunately we don't have to worry about this happening. But if hypothetically speaking, Polygon were to put out an article that said World of Warcraft developer says they plan to kill the game off in the next patch then people would be like, whoa, what the fuck? They're killing off World of Warcraft? That's crazy. And there is no amount of, no, that was a lie. That was a fake article. That's not actually a thing. We're not planning to kill off World of Warcraft. There is no amount of that that we can do in that situation that fully undoes the damage that was done by such an article. Yeah. No matter what, there's going to be people who saw the initial article and never saw the follow-up. And in fact, there's actually going to be people who see the follow-up, go look up the original article, then decide they don't believe the follow up and they believe yeah. that. so by the by posting we actually would be drawing more attention to it and, and so these are the sorts of things that we always have to be thinking about whenever we're talking about public communications and so when we're when we're talking about like stuff like this where it's like oh yeah i saw that porn of uh i don't know uh lucy lou apparently people named lucy are the only names i can come up with tonight <laughs> i i saw that porn of this famous actress yeah, wow. That's that, that's now what they think of that actress, even though they're mortified by it and they're offended and really upset by it. I don't know. It's um, it's scary stuff. Then again, we were saying all these same things about Photoshop like 10, 12 years ago. So mm -hmm. who knows? We'll we'll figure it out, probably. Well, well, now, well, now we doubt everything. Yeah, that that's yeah, where the that's whole it. like that, that's where the whole the whole the yeah, I could tell by the pixels meme basically came from is because it's it's awareness. It's become we we've become more aware that people are getting that good at Photoshop that they could basically fake and build anything. Uh, but video always felt safe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> video always felt kind of safe. And now this is showing that, you know, they, the jig is up. We only got like a couple of years before this you know, video is no longer safe. And people like us who have our face all over everything, not that anybody would really ever want to do it or, you know, make a porn out of us for some reason. Uh, you know, we're it's it's perfect <laughs> learning material for whatever this system is, for whatever the app is going to be to go through and learn this stuff. The eyebrows. <laughs> the eyebrows <laughs> <say> it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting stuff. I, I mean, I can I can see I can imagine all sorts of ways to actually deal with this, like um, coming up with some variation of HDCP that just says that this video was never like it's certified. It was never modified in any way. This is the raw footage or something in some way that it's either very difficult or impossible to crack. That I don't know. There's there's ways that future us will be able to deal with that problem. Well, not us. I'm dumb. But <laughs> you guys will right. be able to figure out how to deal with this. some sort of watermarking or something like that. Is that what you're talking about? Some sort of. Yeah. Or like some some sort of metadata in the file that just sure. says, like, as long as this metadata is still here, then it's fine. If it's not there, then it's busted or something like that. Uh, ways to tie it to the original camera that shot the footage or something like that to prove that it's the actual original unaltered. But I don't know. There even are to, even uh, right now, the. DSLRs don't write metadata to movie files, so it's like even right now they don't do that. So it's like, no, sure, I'm I'm not talking about video no, that I, has been captured yet. I just mean like if in I, I could I could conceive of a future situation in which you have to have that sort of thing on the security cameras that you have at your business. Oh, sure, yeah, to be able to say that your evidence that you see is admissible. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So anyway, um, real quick. Uh, we've been talking about live streaming a whole bunch. I feel like we should at least mention Dr. Disrespect because this is just like 
I don't think there's that much to discuss here. I just want to sort of talk about these numbers because they're crazy. They are. Yeah, the dude, <laughs> there's there's two Dr. Disrespect stories today, by the way. One didn't make the make it in. So I'll, I'll talk about that one in a minute. Okay. But go ahead. Uh, so the one I was going to talk about is um, him coming back from his little hiatus. He, he went on a hiatus for three months. Um, talked about how basically he needed to refocus on his family. He had uh, uh, had an incident with his wife. I'm not going to go into the whole detail here because it's not really what it's for. Um, but he came back, um, has, has apparently patched things up with his wife, by the way. Came back, um, had a huge return stream, broke Twitch for a little while. Um, he, he reached... 389,000 concurrent viewers, which was almost a new record for a single broadcaster. Like, obviously, there have been events that have gotten bigger than that. Um, but for a single broadcaster who's just sort of sitting at their desk, like playing, that was that was almost as much as um, uh, Tyler One, who was the like reformed uh, League of Legends streamer mm-hmm. uh, who took a break for a while because he got in trouble for doing some awful stuff. Very similar incident, actually, or not incident, a very similar um, story overall. Did something mm-hmm. bad, took a hiatus for a while, came back, huge, uh, huge return stream. Um, he gained over 12,000 new subs. At one point in the stream, he said that he had gained 12,000 new subs throughout oh, that stream. That's crazy. Um, that is a minimum. If he gets, if for some reason, Dr. Disrespect gets the flat base you get half deal that Twitch gives, which it's not the case because we know that higher level or higher tier broadcasters, they get a better cut out of the, the per sub um, uh, income. But at the bare minimum, that's $30,000 for wow. one stream that he got right there. Plus bits and donations on top of that. He was donated 5,000 by one person at one point, uh, 1337 by someone at some point. And obviously donations stacks of 500s and 250s. Yeah, yeah exactly. Obviously um, donations, they tend to there. Are, I would not be surprised to find out that some of those donations were then charged back because it was just somebody being being a troll, because that's just that's a problem that we still have with PayPal. Um, but the bits as well coming in and the amount of money that this guy made for taking a vacation. <laughs> yeah. I need to take vacations more. I think <laughs> Apparently that's how you make money. I know. That's right. What yeah. was your... Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, Mike, what's up? What, what was, yeah, the, what was yeah. the other thing that you saw? Yeah. So yeah. the other thing was, um, there was a Kotaku art article today, um, almost like a hit piece, kind of. Uh, it said, uh, well, I, with an asterisk there. Um, so it says, possibly the most popular stream on Twitch, blah, blah, Dr. Disrespect. Um, so a musician, Jimmy Wong, uh, he called him out for... Uh, basically imitating like a Chinese accent or something like that. Uh, I didn't see the video of him doing it. Uh, I talked to Shizzle about it earlier today. It came up and uh, he mentioned it. And the way Shizzle described it, you know, knowing Shizzle, knowing how he talks and how he kind of imitates other things and, and how he describes other things, it's kind of like, okay, if Shizzle thought this and the way he described this, it's like, I can understand like the, he prob- the way he did it, the what he did was probably pretty offensive, pretty fucked up. Um, but it's, it's, it feels like, I mean, this incident aside, it feels like because he came back, you know, he left because of the cheating thing, right? Or I guess the cheating thing, depending on how you want to interpret that. Um, and because he came back to such fanfare, now it's like, I feel like everything he does is going to make a headline. It's almost like, I feel like there's going to be people out there that are going to do just every single thing he does is yeah. going to be a headline until they can get rid of him. Because it's like, clearly, clearly people are not going to be like, oh, he cheated on his wife. He should be skinned alive. You know, it's like, well, no, they're fine with that. Okay, so now we have to we have to find something. There's a sore spot in here somewhere that we're going to get somebody with. Yeah. Uh, and Dr. Disrespect, you know, as his name would imply, can occasionally be uh, entirely disrespectful <laughs> in some of the things he does. I mean, there's also times, you know, when I'm just like, I even tweeted this once. I was like, wow, Dr. Disrespect seemed wholesome now, right? Because he's like dancing <laughs> with this kid and like saying all this positive stuff and everything. It's like, wow, that's pretty great, you know? Uh, he definitely goes like this, you know, uh, sometimes. And so every time he hits that that low point, whatever it is he does there, it's going to be a headline. It's going to come out. Yeah. So, so who's going after him? I mean, is is there one entity that's going after him or is it just kind of people just in general, just because he's so out there on Twitch that people are just so, like, ah, you're always going to offend somebody. Right. But right. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. Uh, yeah. So 
the right now, right now I'm looking at Kotaku, right? Yeah. And Kotaku's got they didn't they didn't say much about the cheating thing, um, but this they they have the Chi- the, the the Chinese uh, um, accent uh, thing, and and he did say something pretty fucking stupid in return. He played the some of my best friends are, oh, are Asian, oh, right? Which is like, uh, oh my oh, god, that's, like, that's almost as bad as I'm not racist, <laughs> but or I'm not <laughs> black, but yeah, whatever. If, you, if you're gonna come up with some kind of excuse for your behavior, like when it comes to like race or ethnicity or whatever, like never play fucking play that card. Like don't don't do that. No, um, I've I've been around Asians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Jesus. Jesus, I don't even want to. <laughs> no, it, so so um, uh, right now, like, well, initially with the uh, uh, with the cheating thing when he came back, I I I have I have a few friends who uh, they 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 think that he should be banned entirely from Twitch, and so they end up retweeting everything. Um, uh everything related to that kind of stuff so so because they're like retweeting like a massive things like you get the idea it's like yeah you know there's a conversation here going that dr disrespect does not deserve the kind of fanfare that he got upon, upon returning because of his actions uh that he that he that he did uh, with his wife uh, or we could say even alleged actions because some of this feels like it's, it's a setup right it's a little tmz <laughs> sometimes yeah. yeah it's a little yeah yeah um, and so, yeah, it does, it just feels like it's going to turn into like PewDiePie. PewDiePie went through the same thing where like everything he did all of a sudden was like being like, like, like months of content was being condensed down into like a two minute video. It's like, oh, this guy's an extremely racist, you know? And granted he did say those things, you know, but when you fed everything all in like one giant ball, like that's when it's just kind of like, wow, now it's like, it hits you really hard. Uh, and I feel like he's the next, he's the next PewDiePie, uh, in that regard. Well, and especially yeah. when you was, especially when you know how much money they're making or something along those lines. And you know that they, I mean, if you made, let's say at minimum $40,000 that day, that stream, mm-hmm. right? I mean, then you kind of expand that out and you say, well, how much is he making a year? Okay. He's, he's the top yeah. dog. We got to knock him down. And it was the same thing with PewDiePie because it wasn't it, um, was it his, uh, 7 million, something like that. That he made in one. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, something so, like that. So something like that, and and so then he became like, you know, on all of the like local TV was was like saying, oh, PewDiePie is a thing now. We have to actually do a story about him, and this is like a local television station doing stuff. It's mm-hmm. Like, all right, now everybody knows that name. So bring in even more people, and more people hate him. Just just yeah. just for being out there. <clears throat> yeah. It's yeah. also like it's really easy once you're making that much money to sort of lose sight of yourself even mm-hmm. and you, you start playing the character even if like obviously that's that's very apparent in Dr. Disrespect because he is just playing a character the entire time but even someone like PewDiePie like his I, I'm sure that his YouTube like attitude is different from how he acts just around friends and stuff um, because when you're creating entertainment content you just act differently than when you're when you're not. Um but that's that's sort of part of the responsibility of the content creator in that case to make sure that you don't do that because <laughs> it's right. bad. <laughs> right. Right. All yeah. right. Uh, so we uh, unfortunately, I would love to continue talking all night, mm-hmm. but we need to wrap this up. Uh, this has been a great show, but first we do need to get a name for our show from the chat room. Uh, so every week on internet famous, we do name the show based off of suggestions from chat room. So go ahead and type those into the chat. Uh, we will take a look here just basically as soon as the delay finishes and we can start getting some suggestions here in chat of, uh, of what we should name this thing. Um, what was the one that we were talking about earlier? Well, was uh, the awkward knee. The awkward knee incident. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We've had, uh, we, we were talking about all the, the, uh, the uh, machine learning AI stuff, the right. Twitch community right. guidelines, battle for Azeroth. All right. Let's see what we got going on over here. Uh, Cr- crane kicks puppies. No. <laughs> no. 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 No, everybody's now. <laughs> I feel like it'd be, it'd be oh, thought police. What up? <laughs> Vana killed the dogs. Where does that even come from? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Where did that suggestion come from? That's weird. <laughs> Took a crane to the knee. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Ask Olivia for Alpha. Oh, boy. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. We all listen to Nickelback. No, I'm no, not putting that no, on my we channel. Don't. <laughs> you know, 
There was a time in my life where I might uh, check out a song or two, but I was never. Uh, oh. I, I I I missed I missed the Nickelback thing. Thankfully, I think it's because I was still I was still recovering from Creed, and it yeah. was the same thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. So what are we what are we going with? What are we going with here? Uh, you, you know, I I I I still kind of like the uh, awkward knee incident. The awkward knee incident. I mean, there's there's a lot of good ones here, but I feel like that. Yeah. I feel like we would be a disservice if we. Get that right off the bat, <laughs> and and the plus, awkward. chat backed us up too. So right? yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, mm-hmm. the awkward, the awkward knees, the awkward knee incident. All right, that's what we're going with. All right, there you the go. Awkward yeah. knee incident. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here, Mr. Pat Crane. Uh, he never made it as a wise man, and he couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'll be back here, guys. Just, uh, <laughs> Mr. Backray, thank you so much for being our special guest here today. Uh, where can people check you out? Uh, well, you can always go over to ConvertToRaid.com. That's where all the Convert to Raid stuff is, including the Battle.net news and, and now Battle.net Sports is over there, too. And anywhere on social media, Pat Crane with a K. That is it. All right, all right. And uh, Mr. Mike B, a.k.a. a.k.a. Mike B., what do you, what yep. you going on? Uh, gonna finish Subnautica. Uh, working on wrapping up a new album. That's great. Nice. And uh, more, uh, more Darnell chat in VR. Nice. Or Darnell VR chat. Darnell in VR chat. That's what I meant. I gotta. I'm gonna have to get on that soon myself. I have my, yeah. I have my headset. It's been sitting behind me, and I just haven't finished setting it up. Uh, you can follow me uh, at Devilor, twitchtv Devilor, twittercom Devilor. The two main channels that I focus on. Um, been doing a lot of GTA RP lately and uh, in the middle at the moment of police training in GTA RP. So that's Ooh. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to hopefully be a fake Internet cop. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah. So once again, uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Thanks so much, Pat and Mike, for being here. And we will see you guys next time. I forgot to click a button. I have to click this button first. Oh, hurry up! Click it! I can't wait! Keep waving! Keep fucking keep doing it! See you guys later. <laughs>